this cat and mouse game that you see occurs during an infection. Your immune cell, the macrophage, has to chase after the pathogen causing infection. Now, during an infection, at times, the number of pathogens far outnumber the macrophage. So the macrophage needs assistance. Today, in BioWorld, I'm going to explain to you the humoral immune response which helps the macrophage get its job done. So come join me. The humoral immune response is carried out by lymphocyte B. On its surface, it has proteins called the MHC class 2 protein. Now, if you've seen my video on the cell-mediated immune response, I would have introduced to you that the macrophage also has surface proteins from the MHC class 2 category. But unlike the macrophage, lymphocytes have an extra protein in the form of immunoglobulins. The immunoglobulin is from the class IgD. However, lymphocyte B does exactly what macrophage does when it meets a pathogen. That is, lymphocyte B will ingest and digest the pathogen into fragments, which are then displayed on the MHC class 2 proteins to become an antigen-presenting cell. Once lymphocyte B has turned into an APC, then the helper T cells, which I introduced in the cell-mediated immune response video, also will be able to recognize this APC. So the helper T will use its CD4 receptors to bind to the antigen MHC class 2 complex. Once it binds, the helper T then is stimulated to synthesize interleukin-2. In the humoral immune response, interleukin-2 stimulates the B cells to proliferate clones of B cells. The clones of the B cells differentiate into two types. One is the plasma B cell and the other, the memory B cell. Both these cells are able to synthesize a protein called antibodies. The plasma B cell will synthesize the antibody when the individual is infected by the pathogen for the first time. Whereas the memory B cells will immediately synthesize antibodies when reinfection by the same pathogen occurs. Now, how does antibody help macrophage carry out its function? Let's find out. Altogether, the antibodies help the immune system as well as the macrophage in four different ways. The first way is called complement fixation. This is when the antibodies bind to the epitopes on the surface of the pathogen and activate a set of proteins called the complement proteins. These proteins then will form pores on the surface of the pathogen, leading to pathogen lysis. The fragments produced from the lysis of the pathogen will then be digested by the macrophage. Pathogens will try to escape from the macrophage and the antibody by infecting body cells. By here, the antibodies will bind to the surface of the body cells to carry out the second method that is called neutralization. In neutralization, antibodies block the attachment sites of the pathogen to the cell, thus preventing them from infecting the cell, meaning that the pathogen cannot hide from either macrophage nor antibodies. 
having nowhere to hide, the pathogen just have to escape the macrophage by moving faster. But antibodies have a solution for that too. They bind to the epitopes of the pathogens, sticking them together in a process known as agglutination. So in agglutination, the pathogens are clumped together, making them unable to move or to move very slowly. And this is of benefit to the macrophage since now the macrophage can slowly capture the pathogen. In a way, the pathogen is trapped, unable to escape the macrophage as well as the antibody. But the pathogen can do one final step, that is to break down into soluble antigens. When it is soluble, macrophages are unable to detect them. But antibodies can help overcome this situation too, that is by a process called precipitation. In precipitation, the antibodies link with the soluble antigens, forming immobile precipitates which become insoluble. So the macrophage can now detect the presence of the antigen. Do take note that precipitation is sort of similar to agglutination. The difference being in agglutination, the antibodies bind to complete pathogens. But in precipitation, the antibodies are binding to soluble antigens. Finally, this insoluble product can be digested by the macrophage to complete the immune process. In conclusion, we've learned that the humoral immune response is headed by lymphocyte B, which can, under the instruction of interleukin-2, proliferate into clone B cells that differentiate into memory B and plasma B. Both these memory B and plasma B cells are able to synthesize antibodies and the antibodies react with the antigens or pathogens in four ways, that is by complement fixation, neutralization, agglutination and precipitation. So that's all from BioWorld for today. Happy studying. Bye-bye.